Okay, so for those ASMR people out there, there was some bandsaw cutting there at the beginning of this video. This is the third video in the horizontal stabilizer section. Um, and I hate to say it, but it is a lot of deburring and sanding and prepping and not a whole lot of putting stuff together. Um, I have found out through doing this, I, I honestly believe 80% of the work, a full 80%, if not more, is actually preparation of parts, not putting parts together. I think putting parts together is less than 20%. Um, so it's kind of crazy. I, that's one of the things that I never really thought um, would be the case. I, I was like, oh, you get the parts, they're already stamped, they already got holes in them. Um, you kind of put it together and you move on. And no, it, there's still a lot of prep um, involved in getting those pieces, even though they're cut right and they're drilled right, that you still have to prep the material, you still have to make sure the holes are good, you still have to final size a lot of them in, in most cases um, and make sure there's no burrs or anything like that. So a lot of prep work if you're going to build the plane. So just be prepared for that if you decide to um, build a Vans aircraft. Well, I'm sure any aircraft, but specifically a Vans one. The um, kit, when you get it, it is all pr like pre-drilled. All the holes are punched and everything. So that does make it nice and easy. You don't have to, you know, drill your own rivet holes or anything like that. They're, they're all there. You just have to, in some cases, final size them. In some cases, you don't. But it is really nice to have it kind of, kind of like, uh, you know, Legos. It just kind of fits together. It's pretty cool. Um, as you can tell there, the, the doubler piece that's on the table, um, we flattened out, so it is flat now. Um, and my dad in the video there, he is, um, the pieces that he cut at the beginning of this video where we cut that angle on the bandsaw, he's filing those edges down, making them nice and straight so there's no gouges or anything in them. Um, and then I'm, oh, there's the boss. Be careful. Oh, there she is. She's letting us know what we need to do. Um, so, oh, and there's the girls. And they were leaving. So we, uh, he was sending it with his, uh, with the file there. And I just figured, oh, I'll grab them and just go do them real quick on the, the um, deburring wheel that you get from the kit from Cleveland Tool. Um, and it it's a lot faster that that deburring wheel is phenomenal um it is so phenomenal that i actually purchased the one inch version of it so i could hook it to my die grinder my air die grinder um, to do the inside <coughs> holes of the ribs um, and it also does make it easy to do the um, inside edge of the ribs as well so that was one purchase that I did make. I'll, I'll show you guys in an upcoming video that particular tool. Um, but I highly recommend those one inch ones. It's nice for getting in areas where you normally couldn't get into. So there I am, deburring the edges of that spar. That the spar is thicker metal than like the normal, than the skin or anything like that. Um, and so it, it does have some burrs on it. You gotta kind of work out and get both sides of it and you know while the ones on the inside might not be that big of a deal it is when your fingers get involved oh there's the other boss that's the main boss that's my wife she is the main boss she lets us know what we're doing wrong um so now you can see that we're um not sanding, but using the scotch Brite pads um, to just scuff up the edges because we're getting ready to uh, prime the each of the parts there. And so while I'm deburring the spar, my dad is um, scotch using scotch Brite um, pads to, to scuff up the edges. Those scotch Brite pads are pretty nice too. And they make it kind of easy um, with all of the little holes because they'll clean up those holes pretty good. Um, and then you don't have to 
do as much deburring with the, the little hole deburr there that's on the table. So here I am, I'm still deburring. Um, just so you know, this nine and a half minute long video um, was actually like four hours worth of deburring work. So just be prepared for that. There is a lot of prep that goes into each of these parts um, to make sure that, well, one, you're gonna be flying in it, so you wanna make sure it's right. So make sure it's right. And two, would you really get in a plane that, you know, you kind of did it halfway? I think that's just kind of common sense. But um, take the time, do it right. You'll notice me in a bunch of videos drilling out rivets. And it's not that the rivets were bad. It's that they weren't perfect. Like they, there was just some little thing that I didn't like about them. And so, I, I, you know, you take the extra five minutes, you drill them out, and you're good to go. Um, but still, we have like two more minutes of deburring and sanding, and it is a lot of time. So there we go. Getting close to the end. And then move the table a little bit, and now we'll start um, scuffing that surface up. Um, and then I'm cleaning out the uh, the file. So you just a steel wire brush to clean out the file. Make sure you get all the gunk out of it so it works good for the next time. That's another thing I've kind of learned is, you know, you take care of your tools. Um, and the better you take care of the tools, the better um, they seem to work. So you'll notice my dad there going through scotch Bright pads. It's, you know, when, when one gets kind of wore out, you know, get another one. It, they're not that expensive, you know, and it is so much easier to use a new one that is not all worn out um, than it is to continue to use one that's been used already and is kind of done, you know, served its life. So you throw those things away and move on. Take care of your tools. Make sure, you know, they work right. My dad always told me when we were growing up, you know, you, you always buy good tools. It's like you, you can buy the Harbor Freight, you know, kind of cheap ones for one job, but don't expect it to last forever. But if you want a tool that's going to last forever, you need to spend the money and get a good tool. So that's true. And you need to take care of it once you get it. So, And we will finish up this video with scotch Bright pad, the whole spar. And then you'll notice I let my dad do that because, well, I did the other one. <laughs> and it's a lot of work. And then we'll clean the parts up with the acetone, make sure we get all the stuff off of them, and then they're ready to um, be painted. Just FYI, I you do need to put gloves on using acetone. I was not doing that there. That is probably a safety thing. So. Just for future reference, make sure you wear gloves with that stuff. It's dangerous. As always, have fun. Bye.